I mean, it's, for me, one of the most tiring aspects of my job, it's not doing the hours, you know, it's, it's not, you know, um, working 18 hours a day in a hot, sweaty kitchen, it's got nothing to do with that. It's actually dealing with the people. So, recruitment is always a pain. It is, you know, there just isn't enough quality staff to, um, to run all the restaurants and hotels in, in Britain or in London, you know. And it's, it's a constant headache. And you get it to a stage where you are fully staffed and it's all running smoothly and then people start to leave and you're back to square one. So it's this never-ending cycle which gets really, really tiring, you know. And sometimes it, it gets you down because you don't see a light at the end of the tunnel, you know. And I don't know what it is that specifically we can do to improve it. I guess you have to train from right from the beginning. You know? mm. I think you need a good kind of apprenticeship scheme, which they have in Australia. They have that in France. Um, and yeah, and you, you've got to start from right at the beginning you know? mm. and encourage more people to, to come into the industry and give them proper training. You know? yeah. First thing is turn up on time. Actually, first thing is turn up. Because ultimately, there's so many people yeah, we don't want to turn up. who book, book um, a stage and never turn up. I don't understand that. That's something that maybe I'm just getting old. I do not understand how um, chefs, young chefs, could book stages and just decide in the morning, you know what, I'm a bit tired, I'm not going to turn up. I don't understand that mentality, which is, you know, I think it's a shame, you know. Um, People don't realise actually that the industry is a lot smaller than they think. You know, we all know each other, and if you do that too many times, you know, eventually it's going to come come round. Mm. And then when you turn up to a trial, I think the most important thing is you're there to make a good impression. Obviously, you're you're there to experience the kitchen, to see if it's the kind of kitchen that you'd like to work in, to see the food, and see if this is the style of food that I want to cook, but ultimately you're selling yourself to the chef, so you need to be on top form, which means you keep your mouth shut, you work with a sense of urgency, you don't just dawdle along and sort of plod along all day, you work your ass off and show an interest, show, show some passion, you know, ask questions because, you know, um, we like that as chefs because it shows that you have an interest and this shows that it's something that you take seriously. Mm -hmm. I think it's quite simple, you know, but there's so many people who get it wrong. <laughs> Will be uh, dining's for Japanese, that's in Malibu, best Japanese in London, without a doubt. Uh, Le Petit Maison, I love that. Uh, pricey, definitely, but it's worth it because the food is spot on. Mm -hmm. um, I love the boundary, simple, rustic, um, classic French dishes. Um, where else did I like? Love Rocker. It's been around for years and years. Actually opened the same year we did. Okay. And, you know, the quality of food doesn't change and it's always great. Okay. Don't have one. You don't have any fast food? Uh, fast food? Um, what, what do you classify as fast food? Burgers, kebabs, fish and chips. Um, pizza? Pizza. <coughs> Don't, don't Chinese, pizza. Indian. Indian is fast food, have you told at all that? <laughs> I think in terms of bringing gastronomy to England, to Britain, it's the Root Brothers. You know, they, they were the first ones to bring, sort of taking uh, cuisine in this country to the next level. In terms of making being a chef um, exciting, a little bit edgy and cool is Marco Pierre. Next big food craze, street food. Good so I guess if I could have worked for someone, it would be Ducasse. The reason being, I like his style of food. Mm. You know, especially down in Monaco, where I love that kind of southern French cooking. You know, with olive oil and sort of provincial cooking. That's the kind of food I love. To Saturday kitchen without that. Yeah. Yeah. The reason that I like it with with omelets. No, not at all. Think about TV when 
there's a lot of people that work on it. Okay, so and from the small experience that I have doing it, especially when it comes in to kind of uh, food shots, there's a lot of repetition because then they'd want a wide angle, then they'd want a close up, and so you have to repeat yourself two, three times going through the same recipe over and over again to get those shots. Whereas Saturday Kitchen is live, you do it once and it's spontaneous and it yeah. shows. So if you if they miss it, it, it's missed. But obviously they have more cameras. Yeah. But it's that sort of adrenaline of it being live and it's watched by three million people, which at the time in the morning is huge. Yeah. Um, you can't beat it, you know. And also you know that at eleven thirty you're done, you know. Rather than you know, let's do another take. And, mm. you, know, you can always do another take. But when it's live and you only have one shot of getting it right, then it just happens. You know? And that's do what you, makes it exciting. Do you get nervous before the three egg omelet challenge? No. <laughs> Main course would be uh, probably katsukare, which is um, it's a Japanese, it's nothing fancy. I grew up on Japanese food, so I feel quite at home with it. And the best curry you can get isn't an Indian curry or a Sri Lankan curry, it's a Japanese curry. And you can get them in, um, we have these little curry shops in stations where it's fast food, you sit on the store and they literally have um, a deep fried battered uh, pork chop sliced and then you have this curry sauce with carrots and potatoes inside it and then served on steaming sticky rice and it's just the best curry. Um, it, it won't be anything interesting. It would be my girlfriend. Um, it would be... Uh, it would just be friends. I mean, the last dinner, I'm, I'm not going to invite some, you know, legendary chef from somewhere. I mean, no. <laughs> last supper. Was better, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I know. You say, well, you know, last dinner I want, you know, Joel Robichon and Alain de Castle or whatever it is, but ultimately, if you're really given that choice, with your mates. yeah, so. you want to be with your mates <laughs> or you know three page three models. <laughs> yeah, change good. You know the quality of stuff they provide. Um, it's not every week that they provide you with chefs, but the ones that they do provide are good. You know, are great. You know, one of my senior chef parties, Julia. Came as a chef to party, and she is now one of the strongest um, chef to parties I have in the kitchen, and that's from change. And I think the most important thing about an agency is they get back to you because so many of them um, promise you the world but don't deliver. Yeah, it's it's all about you know um, I guess communication. You have to get back. Uh, you know, change great because they get back to you and tell you where they're at. And when you're really really short, and in the they sort it out.